the development of secret weapons at Pinamunda had once again become a priority for Adolf Hitler. Two years of war had stretched his forces to the limit. By late 1941, Hitler ordered Werner von Braun, Germany's top rocket scientist, to go ahead with production of the A-4, the world's first long-range combat rocket. Although Werner von Braun was the technical director of the A-4 project, the logistics for its production fell to Walter Dornberger, Pinemunder's military chief. The friendship and common aim of the two men would prove vital to the project. Along with Dornberger, von Braun had assembled a team of brilliant scientists and engineers to produce the A-4 rocket. Augusta Frieda was von Braun's secretary in those early years. Dr. von Braun was very relaxed, never strict, or the way one imagines a boss to be. In the evenings, we would write down all the results of the tests. We were enthusiastic about the idea and how to put it into effect. We never really thought of it as a weapon. It was always a research project. Werner von Braun worked tirelessly on the many technical problems of his design. Dr. von Braun was obsessed with his idea. Otherwise, he would not have been able to inspire his colleagues the way he did, and they wouldn't have been so devoted to him. He also drew the right people closer to him, and they really worked hard to continue his line of thought. It was always most impressive to, to listen to him. He, he was an excellent speaker. He could formulate his ideas very beautifully and convincingly. Von Braun was extremely patient to tell and explain his standpoint and to listen to the other one and to bring forth his arguments, not with, with uh, overwhelming power or with authority also, but just with technical reason and logic. The A4 would travel at roughly four times the speed of sound a velocity unheard of at the time. The aerodynamics of the weapon were a critical factor in the early stages. We had a big wind tunnel at Pinamunda, and uh, we had wind tunnel measurements at uh, various Mach numbers from subsonic to Mach 5, roughly. We were trying to build a supersonic airplane, and that's not that easy. That was when I understood what it means to design and develop a projectile that can go beyond the Mach number, that is supersonic speed. I realized something special was going on there, or something special was being developed. This early filmed diagram shows the technical achievements of the A4. The rocket is driven by the reaction of a jet of high-speed gases produced from the combustion of nine tons of liquid oxygen and alcohol in the space of 60 seconds. The man responsible for this revolutionary breakthrough in the rocket motor was Dr. Walter Thiel. Walter Thiel was in a way parallel to von Braun. He was reporting to von Braun, so von Braun was definitely the overall boss. But Thiel had pretty much his own field. He was not really a designer, he was in fact a chemical engineer himself. But he was in charge of the development of the rocket engine. The capacity of one fuel tank was four and a half tons of liquid oxygen. Keeping the fuel tanks empty until the launch made the A4 easier to transport. Located above the fuel tanks were two gyroscopes which controlled the rocket. These operated the large graphite vanes placed behind the jet to deflect the exhaust gases and so steer the rocket. The first assembled A4 was finally ready for testing by March 1942. was a spectacular failure. When another test failed, the A4 critics in Berlin wanted the project cancelled. 
It was costing billions of marks with nothing to show for it. Von Braun was worried. When the tests failed, he came into his office. Although he was very angry, he kept it to himself. It was terrible for him because each time it was a setback and he couldn't make any progress. The second launch failed at about that point. So again, many people said, we told you so, you just can't make it. And then fortunately with the third one, which was really the last one which had been permitted by Hitler. Hitler wanted to cancel the whole operation. And he insisted, you at least have to show us in one good launch that you can make it, that you can obtain a reasonable uh, distance with your missile. On October the 23rd, 1942, an improved A4 was fired. Once the 25-ton engine thrust kicked in, the rocket accelerated skyward, breaking through the sound barrier in 40 seconds. Von Braun had made his first major breakthrough. After a very successful launch and a big party we had, everyone was drunk. This is the first time that the human-built article has used a part of outer space to get from one place on Earth to another place on Earth. And so that's for me really the beginning of the space age. But the work at Pinamunda was far from over. Another secret weapon was now being developed that would be the prototype of the modern cruise missile. While rocket scientist Werner von Braun was developing the world's first space rocket at Pinamunda for the German army, the Luftwaffe was planning its own secret weapon. By spring 1942, the war was going badly for the Luftwaffe. Having failed to win the Battle of Britain, its commander-in-chief, Hermann Goering, had lost credibility with Hitler. The second in command of the Luftwaffe was Erhard Milch, a ruthless and ambitious man who before the war had built Lufthansa, Germany's national airline, into one of the world's finest. Hitler liked Milch. The fact that he had a Jewish father did not matter. Milch was determined to restore the Luftwaffe in Hitler's eyes and proposed a new weapon, a flying bomb. Milch maintained that unmanned flying bombs offered numerous advantages over conventional bombing. They were cost-effective, had large payloads, and there was no risk to air crew. Unlike the rocket, which was taking years to develop, the Luftwaffe wanted a quick solution and decided to adopt the pulse jet engine for its flying bomb, now designated the FI-103. The early designs showed that the pulse jet was in fact a primitive jet engine that worked on the principle of forcing air through a narrow tube. The FI-103 was launched by placing it on a sled mounted on steel rails on top of a long ramp similar to a ski ramp. A rocket booster then catapulted the flying bomb several hundred miles per hour in a matter of seconds. The Luftwaffe tested the FI-103 at Pinamunda, although this was kept totally separate from the Army's rocket tests. The first flying bomb only flew for 60 seconds and subsequent launches failed miserably. But Hitler saw enough potential in the weapon to let development continue. The FI-103 was in fact the prototype of the modern cruise missile.